higher. Higher than that. That'll do. Behind the bar, please. Room on the left. Um, it's a bit early for food, isn't it? Nah, she's gonna heat it all up later. You all right, Shelley? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fine, thanks. I've just trodden a bargee. They say up it with a bargee. Here, wipe it with that, Fred, love. Hmm. What's he doing here? I'm slending a hand. I bet Betty could have tackled them bargees if she'd had the recipe. Could have had the curry dog pot. Uh, where do you want these elephant gods? Nowhere. That'd be said sacrilegious in a pub. That'd be like putting a picture of Our Lady up on thop ticks. <laughs> uh, out the back with that finger food, please. There's plenty of room in that fridge. You know, I know I came out here for something. Oh, are you? Oil for me, lazy Susan. I hope the smell of curry isn't going to impregnate my soft furnishings. Last time you had a takeaway, I could smell it for a week. Fred, you could drench this place in bleach. It still smell of fags and booze. I ain't half getting confused, you know. Is this going to be a mendy or a sangeet? Right, first up today, we have your actual mendy, otherwise known as henna for the Hindu Hindu. As in, no can do, I've got to do mendy for the Hindu Hindu. <laughs> And that's a party for the bride and her female relatives. Only no one's talking to her, so it's just her and Shelley here. And then there's a party for both families, and that's called a sangeet. Oh, if you want to pronounce it properly, the sangeet. <laughs> and that's what's going on here. Is that clear? As mud. Mm -hmm. I love a bit of effort for a do. You should have seen the ice sculpture I had at my 21st. Hey, yeah, that big budgie. It was a peacock, actually, sweetie. Get it right. If I were reincarnated, I think I'd like to come back as one of them. What, as an ice sculpture? Be a big puddle, that, Fred. No, a peacock. I'd strut up and down Rosamond Street with my feathers all splayed for all the world to see. Oh, hi, love. Um, what do you think? It's a bit OTT, isn't it? Hey, wash your mouth. Well, it's going to be dead special, as you know. Well, I hope we have a good time, love. Well, we can all have a good time, can't we? Off and back and tell you. I see you later. See you, Charlie. See ya. Cheeky. What? Nothing. Just ignore me. I'm being daft. What's up? What do you think? Is that like you to have brown jam? Hmm. You ever get one of them days where you just wake up and feel dead fat? No, not really. But then again, I get plenty of exercise, don't I, with Jamie? I'm not talking star jumps to you, You should try power walking, Joyce. Should I? Although I tried it once and it led to a spit of name calling. No, I think I'm more cut out for the gentler exercises. Yoga lattes, tai chi, that kind of thing. <laughs> what, have you done tai chi? Yeah, boy reckons the get-all makes me look like a dental hygienist. Which is odd, because a gypsy in Blackpool, Haley Ann, no relation, once be told me that I would become a dentist. <laughs> Spooky. How did we get on to this? You, having a fat day. Yeah, well, I'm going to drag that TV into my bedroom tonight and blob out in front of reality TV. Oh, so that, Jan. You want to come down with me? They've been sneaking around from the party later. There's going to be loads of food and everything. Oh, go on. You know you're never happier than when you've got a pop in your hand. You come in, Ailey. Oh, yeah, wild elephants wouldn't keep me away. Do we have to wear sorrows? Do we, heck? Well, thank heavens for that, because if we had, you'd have to shove me into a wigwam. Oh, I could get used to this. Having Joshua fire on and just chilling. I know you want to talk about something. I saw you working up to it in Frozen Foods and then again in Homebake. If it's about Doreen yesterday... Well, we both knew it was never going to be easy, didn't we? What is that? Actually, can we just forget the shopping for one minute, please? Was Maxine like her? A bit. I know you hate hurting people's feelings. It's one of the reasons I fell in love with you. Now, come on, we better get home. Put this lot away before Dorian gets back with Josh. Hey, look. There's something in the freezer bag that shouldn't have been on the shopping list. Ashley. And I don't care what Dorian thinks. Well, I do, but I've got it off the internet. Oh, get you. <laughs> well, does it fit you? I don't care if it doesn't. I'd wear it loose. I won't wear it in front of Doreen. Actually, it's perfect. Well, he's certainly not philandering at the moment. I was just being daft. Don't say anything. I never do.
Your lazy Susan's still squeaking. Huh? <laughs> Story of my life. Charlie, can I ask you something? Yeah. Am I being too needy? Shelley, <laughs> let me give you a bit of feedback. You're acting like we've had a row. We haven't. So I am being too needy? No, you're not. You can be as needy as you like. In fact, I'm glad you need me. It's just... Stay unattractive, isn't it, yeah? No, it's no, just... I, it's not your fault. It's nothing you've done. It's just... Well... I, I went to see this play once. Um, with school, Shakespeare. I can't even remember what it was called. In, in fact, it bore the life out of me. But... <laughs> There was this king in it, and he had the ghost of his dead father hanging over him all the time, and it really did his head in. Well, I think I've got a ghost hanging over me. Hey? Peter. And it's really doing my head in, because if he hadn't done what he did, then I'd be able to deal with this. And I don't think I can. Do what? Our relationship. Any relationship. Shelley, I'm not Peter. And what he did had nothing to do with you. It was to do with him being a complete and utter... Well, you know what I think of him. I just feel better speaking to you. This party tonight means a lot to you, doesn't it? Well, it's supposed to be so special for Sunita, and all his family are going to be there, and her family aren't talking to her, and she's only got me, and you're my fella, so... Hey! Calm down. Put all the stops out. I might have to work a bit late, but I'll be there. Oh. Okay. Hi. Oh, Gail. Hi. I was just trying to ring you. I'm running a bit behind on that wee fit I'm doing at the convent, and one of the sisters is giving me help. So, I was wondering if I could come round this evening. It's OK. Yeah, that's great. Um, if I pop out, you've got your key. And Sunita gets her arms painting with this henna, you know, that, like, symbolises love and all that. So are you painting Sunita Thompson, Shelley? No, I can't do a doctor dot. Yes, Gail. Uh, can I have a pineapple juice and a fizzy water, please, yeah. Shelley? I'm dead thirsty today. Oh, got a hangover. Yeah, finished off a bottle of plonk with a tall dark stranger last night. Did you? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so who is painting Sunita Thompson? It's my mate Feroza. She's a peripatetic makeup artist. She paints mine as well. Isn't Feroza the blind one? Blind makeup artist, that's novel. No, she's deaf and dumb. Or do we not say that anymore? Non speaking, non hearing. Hear no evil, speak no evil? Well, you catch my drift anyway. I think it's dead exciting. For Rosa, hiya. Oh, do you want a drink? Get her a whiskey by. She might not speak, but she can't have drink. <laughs> Here comes the sangi girl. Um, no, I've got other plans. It's all dark stranger. Then, of course, they've got that new ride on Balaclava Terrace. It's a sort of a. Uh, Mini chairplane, I guess you'd call it. Well, he went round that many times. I got dizzy. Well, he's wearing a new top. I got dizzy and he got sick. Well, he'd had that burger beforehand and those fries and that milkshake, strawberry, pink sick all down his front. So I took him to Sandrine's. Sandrine's my pal with the kiddie boutique. Well, if you give me the dirty one, I'll pop it in the machine now. Oh, it was ruined, love. I threw it in the bin. I bought in that top. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it was all ruined and, and dirty and not very nice. Nothing a bit of soap pie doesn't have sorted out, though. It smelt. He's got a lovely new one. The one he had on was new. I put it on especially because I wanted him to look nice for you. And I wanted him to look nice for you! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I can't do right for doing wrong! Hey, hey, hey. Get that down, you can't be. It's a nice cup of tea. <laughs> Maxine wouldn't have had a go at me. I just think it's a bit profligate to go chucking clothes away because they're a bit dirty. Maxine wouldn't speak like she'd swallowed a dictionary either. I won't apologise for having a brain in my head. Are you saying... She isn't saying anything. That kiddie is her son. Not yours, hers. And I won't have you sullying her memory like this in front of him. She's not. She's very respectful. She'll be glad she's taken him on. Not everybody would. Oh, oh I'm sorry he's such a burden. He is not a burden. I might not love him as much as Maxine might have done, but I love him just as much as I can. <laughs> and Mandy. Oh, it looks like I've got gloves on. <laughs> it symbolises the strength of love in marriage. 
That's why every bride wants it to stay on as long as possible. I bet you feel so different to when you're getting together with Kieran, don't you? Oh, don't. I can't believe I was ever serious about him. You know, he's so much more sophisticated than English hen do, isn't it? I mean, slapping L plates on, drinking 18 pints of snake bite, making a fool of yourself on the dance floor. You haven't seen Deb's dance moves yet, so you're not far off. <laughs> Sangeet started! <laughs> I said to her, I said, you do realise, you are aware that the use of the apostrophe in the sign means that the hot pot owns something. So what does it own? And what does she say? Well, it, it would be rude to repeat it in polite company. I'm not polite, Roy. Repeat it. Well, I've never been to an Asian party before. Yeah, well, you better get used to it, Warren. When you're an international footballer, we'll be eating on all six continents. You set your sights high. You're like a bleeding giraffe. No, I really didn't get any of that. Oh, hiya. Oh, no. I, I didn't know. <coughs> In fact, I had no idea you'd be here. Oh, you do look borderline gobsmacked, Patrick, it has to be said. No, no, I just think I remember Leanne telling you. I remember... Roy, obviously. What? Have you ever seen Love Actually, Janice? Yeah. <coughs> Don't you want to smack that brat? Well, this is my homage to that. Fine, that's a homage to a, a Dylan video. What, the rabbit from Magic Roundabout? I didn't know he'd done a video. Patrick, just get us a bevy in, will you, and I might just forgive you. What's up, one? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Such a heavenly spread. Your mother was just saying, weren't you, Urmila? Wasn't I, darling? And who is this devilishly handsome man? This is my best man, Mike. He didn't tell me you had such a twinkle in your eye. And is this Titian Temptress, your lady wife? Uh, no, just a friend, Rita. Oh, how lovely to meet you. <laughs> Mike uh, runs the factory across the road. Oh, and uh, what do you make? Um... Well, let's just say ladies' underwear. I hope business is booming, dear. A lady always needs pants. <laughs> Oh, will you feast your eyes upon that? She may just be a shop girl, but she scrubs up incredibly well. You'd have been in silver. I see it's both in gold, actually. Come say hi to Mum and Dad. Doesn't she look great, Dev? Candescent. Like an angel. Dev. Sunita. No hard feelings? Oh, and she looked so beautiful, what she always did. But that day, like an angel. All the same, I can't let it pass forever. And I am sorry, Doreen, but it's time to move on. You're lucky. You can. You can get another wife. I can't get another daughter. Oh, I'm sorry, Claire. It's not what you need to hear. There'll always be a place for Maxine in Ashley's heart, you know, Doreen. I get a bit jealous of it sometimes. It's weird, being jealous of someone who isn't here anymore. But Maxine will never, ever be forgotten in this house. Thank you. Thank you. I know... It's ever so slightly inappropriate for me to be here. But I just had to come and give you my best wishes. I've given this so much thought, and... I just want you to know that I wish you well. Is that it? Uh... They really need to go in water, actually. <laughs> I'll stick them somewhere else if you're not careful. Ranjeev! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Miller. I bet you didn't expect to see me here. Well, you could say that. And now I should go. I just wanted to give you the flowers and wish you both luck for the future. You deserve them, Sunita. I see that. I'm sure they wouldn't want to banish you, Maya. We're all friends here, aren't we? Are we? Of course we are. Maya, come with me. Have something to eat. I hear the Stadkadar is amazing. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, well, only if you're sure. Of course. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> uh, if you'll excuse me a minute, though, I've just got to catch the ladies. Oh, Sunita, that's uh, quite a firm grip you have. 
I don't like you. I've never liked you. I think you're a freak, and I'd like you to leave now. Uh, actually, Sinisa, so you're beginning to hurt me now. <sighs> I'd lose very easily. Don't tell me. Look, you obviously have issues, and really, that's perfectly understandable. I'll just go to the little girl's room, and then I'll be out of your hair. I'll be waiting. <sighs> Sinisa, don't be like this. I don't know that I can bear it. This might sound odd, but I was rather hoping that one day, after all this, we might be friends. Listen, Maya, I've got enough mates around here, thank you. And most of them are on the right side of psychotic, so I tell you what, why don't you just nip to the loo and then leave, yeah? I wish you wouldn't carry all this anger around with you. It's a killer. Do you ever take any time off? All the women in my life have said I'm married to the job, not to them. <laughs> Should work to live, not live to work. I know. I'm not getting any younger. Mm. Tell me about it. <laughs> I was walking to work this morning and I thought, how many times have I walked over these cobbles? How many times have I passed this phone box? And I thought, is this it now? Forever and ever. I get up in the morning, feed the kids, wash the pots, get off to work, phone, file, chit-chat with the boss, chit-chat with the colleagues, back home, make the tea, make the bed, draw the curtains, wipe away the tears. I should be careful what I wish for, you know. I should be happy to settle for mundane. I've wanted excitement before and... <laughs> so, I went to the travel agent and I picked up this brochure about weekend breaks. And this young girl comes up to me and starts talking at me. She looked about 12. <laughs> so, uh, I realised I'd picked up the wrong one. I picked up the one for romantic weekend breaks. Anyway, I couldn't be bothered to argue with her, so I took it anyway. And she said, I bet he's gorgeous, your fella. <laughs> Sales pitch, I know, but I thought, well, at least she hadn't got me down for some sad old spinster of the parish. <laughs> There's hope for you yet, Gail. Anyway, I'll get you the brochure, shall I? Might be something nice in there for you and Shelley. Top idea. <laughs> Where's Charlie? Oh, he's all right. He'll be here in a minute. He's doing some work up at the convent. One of the sisters is giving this to Oh, you're all right, Joe. Yeah, of course we're all right. Hey, I tell you what, this party's a great success. Everyone's having a lovely time. Mm, I'll second that. <laughs> oh. So where's, uh, you know who? She whose name must not be mentioned. She went to the loo about three years ago and hasn't been seen since. Do you want me to have a look in, see what's occurring? Oh, spoke too soon. Tanita, you know I can chuck her out. It's my pub. Just give me the wink. So, I think at my imaginary dinner party for people dead or alive, I'd invite uh, Emily Lincolnhurst. Good choice. She have a lot in common. <laughs> Princess Diana, obviously. Oh, um, Claire Short and... Rob Pauline, you. You're good. Uh, well, Wilfred Owen. Mm-mm. Uh, you, you a fan, Paul? Well, I've never heard of him. Well, uh, another poet. And, um... Good. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't concentrate. Right, um, William the Conqueror. And what about your light relief? You need some light relief or else things get dull over the soup course. Well, I'm swinging between George Formby and Old Mother Riley. Oh, Mother Riley, no contest. It's my party. It's hypothetical, Roy. Hey, is anybody sat here? Uh, yeah, the invisible man. <laughs> oh, put him down, Janice. You don't know where he's been. Uh, Roy, you know my fella, don't you? Yes, of course. We're, we're just having a game of a fancy dinner party. Who you'd invite dead or alive for him? Well, Tony Marsh. Why? In the end, and uh, bow selector. Who? Who? Um, what, what about well, somebody a bit heavyweight? Rick Waller. Oh, sod this. If you can't beat him, join him. Come here. Stick another one in there, Kieran, and fill it up to the brim. Coming up. Cheeky. 
you cry yourself to sleep every night, Kieran? Now, why would I want to do something like that? Busy with a film. Keeping Sunita company while she was revving herself up for death. I bet when she was in bed with you, she didn't even see your face. She saw his. It's really upset me, but uh, I think I'm reaching closure. Well, I'm really happy for you. Cheers, Kieran. Are you going to oh, pay for that? <laughs> oh! oh! God, I'm so sorry! Get out of my party, you stupid oh, freak! Sunita, I can't believe you're being like this. It was a mistake, I swear, Kieran, tell her! Right, come on, lady, that's it, enough, out! Get your hands off me! I've never been treated like this in my whole well, life! you should get out more now, out! Oh, it seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? Well, if it was a mistake... Women. What would you understand? I understand plenty, love. Is it so bad to wish happiness on someone? And yet somehow, and this is the weird thing, that makes me the devil incarnate. I'll tell you what the weird thing is, Maya. You! Oh, I'm fighting a losing battle. I don't know why I'd bother. My pleasure. Coming up next, over ITV2... Who do you think should go through? If you missed the Judges' House of Special, fear not, as it's being replayed next on ITV2. Next here, it's the bill, then at nine, the ultimate test of the nation's spelling power. It's men v women. It's live and interactive. It's the Great British Spelling Test. Then at 10.30, it's the ITV News.